Now guys, what's going on and welcome back to another series on the channel and this time we're going to be taking over at Inter Milan. Now I hinted this recently on one of the community posts and the response was fantastic and I'm really looking forward to this one. Now I wish we were on the PC and it was modded but I just don't have the PC version and I don't have time to sort all that out at the moment and purchase the new game and set it all up. So we are going to do it on next gen and that's the way we're going to work it. So we don't have the correct kits and badges and stuff for some of the teams like Juve and Roma, which is a bit of a shame, but it kind of is what it is. At least we're fully licensed with Inter and our arch rivals in AC Milan. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing an Inter kit because I am actually a little bit of an Inter Milan fan. Now I'm not a diehard fan, but I've always been a big fan of the team and the club, especially the time that Jose Mourinho spent there. I love I've seen Samuel Eto in an Inter Milan shirt. I, I just, I'm a fan. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I think this is going to be a really fun career mode. Now, something that should be noted, this will not be the same as the Salford career mode. This is going to go at a way quicker pace than what we've done with the Salford career mode. And hopefully that will lend well to the style of career mode we're going to do. So it's going to be like in between what a rebuild would be and then what a full let's play would be that we have with Salford. I'm really looking forward to this one. So we're going to be giving 85.69 million and we've got a decent squad. Now, of course, in real life, some financial issues for Inter Milan. And then Lukaku went to Chelsea. Hakimi went to PSG, which were two major key components to Inter Milan's title winning season uh, last year. So that's really hurtful, but we've still got some superstars in this team. We really do. It's a little bit aging, though. I will mention that. The team is a little bit old. So we are getting on a little bit when it comes to the squad, but it is still a decent team. Some of these players are going to go down very quickly, and one of the instant comments was you need a goalkeeper because of Handanovic's age. Now, I think Handanovic has still got a few more seasons in him, if I'm being 100% honest. I'm a huge fan of him, but in terms of FIFA, no, he probably doesn't. He's probably going to go down very very quickly in fact most of these players here will probably go down very quickly i do want to try and use some of them in season number one perisic being one of them and edin Dzeko. i've been quite impressed with him so far this season at inter i wasn't too sure on the signing but he's been very good for us but i at least want to give him some opportunities this season because we are probably going to be playing two up top we're going to probably play a strike partnership Kind of like they do in real life. And of course, Letaro Martinez is nailed on. He is the god of this team. I love Letaro Martinez. And hopefully, we'll bag goal upon goal. Now, if you didn't see the Spurs series, we actually signed him for Tottenham. And I loved using him. I'm excited to get to use him again. That was a key reason for this. But one of the options we do have here is play Martinez there. And then Correa, the young lad that they brought in, I believe, from Lazio. Uh, I believe he's going to be a permanent deal as well. I don't know if that will be in the game. But in real life, I'm sure this transfer has already been made permanent. But this could be the future one-two punch that we have here up top. At least maybe for this first season. Now, I'm a big fan of Denzel Dumfries. I think that was a fantastic signing. I, I really like him. He does like defensively, but he's... A good talent going forward. And considering we have three very good centre-backs, I think it gives Dumfries just that range to run. And of course, in the centre of the park, we are actually really strong. Although Brazovic is not getting any younger, and my, I'm a little bit tainted. I watched them against Genoa last night, and Brazovic didn't have a great game. We've also got Hakan Chanaloglu, which is an ex-AC Milan player. So that adds a little bit of spice to the derby as well, joining on a free. So the team is decent. I think it needs more youth. We need some more young players coming into this team. That's without a doubt. When we look in this transfer market now, I'm probably going to be looking at young talents to help add to this team because it's a very old squad. That's one thing that Conte did when he came to the team. He did make us a league winner. But he also made us super old. Like, he brought in a lot of old, wise players that were veterans to the sport. But in terms of FIFA, that doesn't lend itself too well because, of course, older players just go down so quickly. Look at the objectives real quick. And they're just what you would expect. Win the cup, win the league title. They want us to reach the final of the Champions League because that's realistic. Uh, but it's what you'd expect. Obviously, there'll be quite a hard focus here on the Champions League. And this is the group we've got. Inter, Real Madrid, Shakhtar, Donetsk and Hearts. It shouldn't be Hearts. But I believe the other team that is in there, I think it was Sheriff. They're, they're not in the game. So that's really unfortunate because they did really, really well in this group. Uh, but they're not going to be in there. So we will be taking on Real Madrid, Shakhtar and Hearts. The Real Madrid games, of course, the big ones there for us. 
hopefully we can pick up some victories there'll be a big focus on the champions league of course but we want to win the league as well this is probably going to span maybe over two seasons i would imagine uh, and not much beyond that doesn't look like we've got a star in the academy and i haven't had a star in the academy since swapping profiles and moving to a new login for fifa and i just think that might be the way that that login's recognized of course my account got hacked so we had to move to a different account on the same game but i'm just guessing it doesn't pick up that i should have the bonus of a superstar potential in the academy it's a bit of a shame because it would have been cool to have got to use them in this series and let's be honest we could use all the youth that we can get right now but it's not the end of the world the one guy that was pushed a lot is andre onana of course now he's back in the game again after his suspension and we're gonna go in and try and make this deal straight off the bat i believe that inter have got a pre-contract in place to sign him anyway but unfortunately we don't have that in the game and it doesn't even look okay so he does have his contract expiring so we should be able to get him for bang on 32 million this definitely just fixes the goalkeeper position straight away we're not gonna have to worry about that anymore andre and anna as well is a very good goalkeeper he's someone who's been hotly tipped to go to teams for a long time I'm pretty glad that Inter are going to make this deal happen in real life because he's an exciting young goalkeeper who could be the starting number one for Inter Milan for several seasons to come. It is going to be sad to see the reign of Handanovic slowly disappear now. It really makes me sad. Handanovic has been such a good goalkeeper for so many years and such a great goalkeeper for Inter Milan. But I, get it. I guess it's kind of out with the old right and in with the new. And Andre Onana will probably... Get the majority of games this year as goalkeeper just purely because of how FIFA works. And Danovic is going to go down so quick. After signing number one, we've only got 53 million left. But I'm pretty sure I can just work with the budget a little bit here and give us more cash. Because, like, we're not going to be paying that many wages. And it's now just an issue of figuring out what position makes sense. Before we make any more signings, we're going to play this game here in the Super Copa against Juve. This is going to be our starting 11. It's very strong. I've opted with probably what will be our starting 11 in the future going forward. So no Eddie Dzeko in this one. No Handanovic. And Nana gets his first start for the club. They've got Vlahovic up top and they've just signed Marcus Rashford. So, you know things are things right so this will not be an easy game against Juve and it's going to be interesting we can test here how good we're going to be against one of the top sides in the league I want to kick this series off with a win as well just because of that man right there I want to kick this series off with a win I want to get a victory over Juve as well obviously they've been horrendous in real life for the past few seasons and we've started to take a bit of dominance with us and I want that to continue here. I really do. And I want to win the first trophy of the series. It's always nice to kick the series off with a trophy lift. Now, this is going to be an interesting one, right? Because I'm now using Inter Milan instead of Salford. This is probably going to feel very, very different to the games I've been playing very recently. I haven't played with a good side since RB Leipzig. So let's see how we get on. Perisic now. Not wide. He's going to be so important for us. But it's definitely a position we need to be looking into because of his age. He's not the uh, the springest of chickens, is he? This is nice play, though. Get that one over. Lutaro Martinez is always going to be a threat there in the box, but we can't win the header. Oh, Brazovic has done brilliantly. Correa with the shot. He's saved by Wojciech Szczesny. Just danger signs there for Juve early in this game. Brazovic doing a very good job. He's playing as the CDM today. Hopefully, we'll get as much as possible out of him. He's getting on a little bit, but he's probably one of the better central midfielders at the club. Along with that man, Barella. Although I do miss the tackle. Oh, this is a good ball in. Dusan Vlahovic, of course, the danger man today for Juve. I was quite shocked that Dusan went to Juventus. To be honest with you, I thought he would have gone to, to like a Real Madrid first. But I, I do see Juventus for them as a little bit of a stepping stone. I'm not going to lie. I think his future move will be to uh, w probably Real Madrid. This has felt like a preseason game so far. There's one thing that doesn't change in FIFA, and that is how rapid... Quadrado is absolutely rapid. Oh, he's done me twice, but he took too heavy of a touch and an will hold it. Nadeshi now. What can he do? Juve scoring there just before half time would be massive, and that is unbelievable play. But Marcus Rashford was offside. Luckily for us. Well, not the greatest first half in a series. Going to be 100% honest. Hasn't been the greatest. Neither team has really done much. Just that offside opportunity from Rashford. One shot in the entire game. And it was that Correa shot. Wow. What a banger of a start 
to this Inter Milan series. I'm going to actually look at the tactic real quick because I didn't. I just went with what was the base tactic for us. And at the moment, it's just all balanced. And I, I don't like that. I prefer faster build up and at least forward runs in behind. We'll go without pressure uh, on heavy touch for the moment, though. And Taro Martinez is acting as a target man. And I really don't want him to do that. I want him to get in behind. Perisic wins that. Now the question is, is can we break a little bit? Go on then, Correa. Nice ball over the top. But again, Correa's been outbeaten by Benucci, which is really worrying. I thought Correa would have uh, a lot of joy over the top. But he keeps getting outbeaten by Benucci. Now, I know Benucci is an unbelievable defender. I'm not slagging off Benucci as a defender. But in terms of runs in behind, I do feel like Correa should be able to make them. Again, that's not a bad ball, but he wasn't the best. And Delict will be a problem. Correa manages to keep hold of it there, though. That's fantastic work from him. And I've got a runner here out wide. It's going to be Perisic up against Cuadrado. And, yeah, and it's just been a bit of a sloppy match. Well, Dusan Vlahovic comes off for Dabala. We're not going to make any subs yet. I've still got a lot of faith in the 11 that we've put out here. Is this where we can break away? Brazovic. We'll find Correa. Correa will be fouled, but we will keep going. Perisic there. Didn't stay as wide as I wanted him to stay. And the problem is, is maybe we should have taken that foul, although Correa still has it. He's going to play that one in behind to Hakan Chanaloglu, who has to make it 1-0 into Milan. Deco now. Good link-up play. Barella. Oh, that's lovely. Letaro Martinez. Oh, he's pulled it beyond the post. I thought that was going to be 1-0 into Milan. I think he thought it was going to be 1-0 into Milan. I feel like we've grown into the game more than they have, just without the goal, as Arsenal comes on now for them. Tactical tweaks feel like they worked. So I think we need to go in at the end of this game and obviously tweak again and just get that sorted. The problem is, is I'm looking at my bench and there's just not many players there that I think I would like to bring on. Like, a lot of them are really old and, and just... I don't know how much impact they're going to have. Well, nil-nil at full time, eh? So we are going to have extra time, I think. I don't know if it goes instantly to penalties. If it does, we're in trouble because I'm terrible. But you can see there, this has not been a pretty game. Three shots for us, one for Juve. It's been a stalemate. We do actually get extra time. It isn't going to go straight into penalties. Oh, this is a great ball in behind to Chiesa. This is a dangerous opportunity here for Juventus. Oh, and we get away with it. Can we break now? We just haven't had any breaks at all in this game. And that is a good ball from Letaro Martinez. And then Dzeko collects it. He's going to have to shoot from distance. And he forces a great save. He doesn't have the legs to keep making that run. Oh, Rabiot now from distance. Oh, my God. What a goal that was from Rabiot. Well, there was no stopping that one. There's absolutely nothing we could do about it. That's the end of the first half here of the added on time. And we haven't done anything again. We haven't created anything. And it, what it's done is it's taken a moment of pure genius from Rabiot in order to give them the lead. But do we have any moments of genius in our tank? I'm hoping we do, but considering that first half, I, I'm not too optimistic. Our key players have not played too well. I think we're going to have to tweak this tactic even more uh, and work on it even more because at the moment, it doesn't pose enough of a threat when we're going forward. Well, has done brilliantly there. Oh, he's done brilliantly there. They deserve that. That is the worst defending you will see in this series. And Dybala makes it 2-0 Juve, and they'll be winning the Super Copper. What a bitterly disappointing display here from us, to be honest with you. We had brief moments before the end of the game to win it. We didn't take them. Our passing has been poor in this game, as we just highlighted there. And the defending has been even worse. Oh, here they come again. This could end up being really painful. It has been two unbelievable goals, to be fair. Not much Anana could have done about them. I think Dybala's substitution was fantastic for them because he changed this game. Rabiot with a worldie of a goal. But then Dybala just kept tearing me apart with the skill moves. I couldn't do anything about it. And we will fall short of our first trophy in this series. If that was a taste of what's to come with this squad, I don't, I don't like it. I do not like it. I instantly think we've got no other impacts, right? After the starting 11 play, there was no extra impact. So these are some of the players that I've got on the list. One that was recommended quite a bit was Mikel Damsgaard. I was really impressed with him in the Euros. I'm going to go in and try and sign him now. Hopefully, we could get a decent deal for him as well. 14 point. I, I reckon it's probably going to take near 20, but we're going to go in at 15 million to kick off the negotiation. Go on, Edin Dzeko. It's not going to happen. Although I wasn't super impressed with him, it's still not going to happen. We got to 18 million. They want 23.5. It's less than his release clause. He's only 21, so we'll pay it. Didn't cost us too much on the wages. Only 35.5 grand on a three-year contract. So that is another reinforcement that we need because... 
I didn't actually have a substitution for Perisic in that game. Like, Goosens is going to come back and I think will be very good for us and we will use him, but we, we didn't have a good enough substitution in my opinion. I'm not sure on this formation. I think we might play it a little bit more like this. I think this is going to suit us more now. I'm going to have to retrain Dumfries to play right mid, Goosens to play left mid, which is absolutely fine. But, and they can play in those positions now anyway. But I think this is how we're going to play. A little bit more with two flat strikers as well, a cam to link up the play. Because I felt like we didn't have anything in between the strikers uh, when we were playing the ball forward. Right, so I had in my head that we was going to go for Raspadori. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move Correa to be a cam. So I thought we'll go for Raspadori. Unfortunately, he's already been transferred to Watford. So we're going to go for Skamaka instead. It'll be good to have a young Italian striker joining the team as well. Sassuolo have done really well with bringing through talent. I'm not going to lie. They really have been impressive. And we need this kind of player, I think, because at the moment, we've got Edin Dzeko, Letaro Martinez and Sanchez. Let's be honest, they aren't getting any younger. Apart from Letaro Martinez, I don't know who I can rely on in front of goal. Transfer signing number three done dusted then. Skamaka joins the team. I'm actually very excited to get to use him. He probably wouldn't have been someone I'd have looked at. So thank you very much for the suggestions. Again, you guys smashed it. Obviously, there's some players on this list that will be players that we look at further down the line. Well, I do want another central midfielder, and I think I'm going to try and sign Danny Ceballos. Now, people might not love Danny Ceballos because of his time at Arsenal, but I don't think he's been given really an opportunity uh, since going back to Madrid. And I like him. He's a good technical central midfielder. He's only going to cost us 13 million here. And I think he fit in our midfield fantastically. He was a little bit on the higher end, but he did take a pay cut to go down to 61 grand. And there we go. So that's another signing done. I'm really happy with the signings we're making at the moment. Most importantly, we're getting a little bit younger. We're getting a little bit younger with the team because these players really are going to go down very quick. I'm glad we could get another signing done and dusted. Who will we kick off the Serie A season against? It'll be Calgary as well as Bologna. Now, I've listed some of the goalkeepers, so we've got an off air for Radu, um, but... But I'm going to try and keep the core of the team together for this first window. And then we'll look to move players on in January. So January suge uh, suggestions are going to be hugely important, guys. So make sure you get your suggestions in for January. We've currently got about 38 million left. I think I might make maybe at least one more signing before the end of this window, though. I feel like we're a little bit weak on the right. So we're going to sign this young French winger. 19 years of age, Mbaku. And I'm actually looking really forward to using him. Now, I don't know if his name will be... Mbaku, or it will just be Baku. I'm not sure if the Emmy sign on. You'll go, you guys will have to let me know. You know already. If you're new to this channel and you don't already know, your boy is absolutely horrendous at pronunciations. Also, if you are new to the channel and you haven't already smashed the subscribe button because I probably forgot to say it at the start of the video, make sure you do it right now. As well as hitting the like button if you're going to enjoy it. The like button really is an indicator to me that you guys are enjoying the series and you want more of it. So we're going to kick off the Serie A season with a win against Calgary, which is good to see. We then are going to move on and play against Bologna, which we will lose 2-1. Not a good result. I've been getting a few bids in. None of them have really interested me. Of course, I'm not going to let Bastoni go, even though Newcastle are now rich. But we are going to let uh, Vicino go. We're actually going to let him leave. He's 30 years of age. He is one of the central midfielders that potentially we might need if we get a couple of injuries. But I just think, why not bring in the extra cash while we can at the age he's at? Also, I will know, AC Milan got a little bit weaker because Teo Hernandez has joined Real Madrid. Fortunately, the talks have broken down for Vecino, so he won't be leaving the club at the moment. We've got a swap deal here for, for Skriniar. That's not going to happen. Uh, we're not going to be impacting that back line at all this season because... I mean, those three centre-backs are brilliant. Bastoni, De Vrij, and Skriniar, all three are going to be staying in that team. With the window shut, we can now start to focus on trying to get through this season. Real Madrid as well coming up in the horizon. Next play game in this episode is going to be against Sassuolo. This is going to be the start at 11. Skamaka getting his first start up top. Goosens comes in on the left. It's a very strong lineup. I've opted with Correa today. I just want to see how he gets on at Cam uh, and see if we can get much out of him. This should be difficult, though. Sassuolo are a decent team. Inter recently lost to them 2-0 in real life. I love the fact that we get to play at the San Siro, though, guys. This was one of the biggest selling points about doing Inter Milan, is that we get to play at the San Siro. I would love to visit this stadium in real life. It's on the bucket list. This is just one of the grounds I would love to go and watch a game at. I did hear, like, years ago, or, like, two years ago, they were going to knock it down. I don't know if that's still one of the things that's going to happen or if COVID kind of stopped that, but 
Yeah, man, I'd love to watch a game of the San Zero. But we tweaked the tactic a little bit, didn't we? So I'm hoping I can get a little bit more out of the team in this game than what we saw in the Juve match. Well, that's lovely, Tilataro. It's nice, then back out to Denzel. The problem is here is, who do we pass it to? That's lovely play. Correa is a cam nearly making it 1-0. If Correa can be dangerous from that cam position, it seems like the perfect decision to have made. We just need to make sure he keeps getting into those positions. Dumfries. Pings that one back out wide. Goosens. Skamaka. Oh, that's nice play again to Correa in a dangerous position. This time it'll be held by the goalkeeper, but I think Correa was actually offside. Correa's a little bit older than I thought he was as well. I don't know. I think there's two Correas, right? There's the one at Atletico Madrid that is younger. And for some strange reason, I thought he was uh, younger. He's only 27, bearing that in mind. Skamaka now. Gets that out to Denzel Dumfries. Correa, that'll be a foul. And Hakan is not on the pitch because he'd be perfect for this free kick. I wonder if there could be a way for us to get Correa and Hakan both on the pitch. Brazovic is going to take this. I have no idea how this is going to go. Again, if you're new to the channel, you probably won't know, but I'm horrendous at free kicks. And that will continue in this series. Right there, finding a bit of room here for Goosens. He'll find Lataro. Lataro is very, very comfortable on the football. He's going to go back across to Goosens here. Good position for Goosens. What is the shot? What was that from Goosens? Well, that's not a way to make your introduction to Yorkie, is it? Unbelievable opportunity not taken. I feel like we've played better than that UV game, but it still feels like we just can't score a goal. Lataro, that is not a bad idea. They seem to be cutting out just these last ditch tackles that are just stopping me from getting through. I mean, they've had some moments here. We've just done really well. That should be 1-0. We're gonna go 1-0 down to Sasulo. This is not a good start. I wasn't sure how difficult this was gonna be, but pretty difficult by the looks of it. We need two goals now. This would be back-to-back -back defeats in the league season. We're kind of playing like Inter's form right now in real life. I need more from this second half. This is not acceptable whatsoever. Not for the reigning champions. And not for our start of the season, because this puts us behind everyone instantly. Two defeats in the Serie A would be very painful here, early doors. Goosens. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. It's going to be a good touch from Skamaka against his old club. He's coming back over, Letaro. <laughs> How have we not found the back of the net there in that moment? That, without a shadow of a doubt, should be 1-1. One, one. Oh, here they come again now, Sasulo. Oh, this is really well worked. And what a save from Anana. I think as this game goes on, Sasulo actually look better than us. They actually do. And that's nothing on them, but they actually are performing far better than we are. I'll play that one wide to Goosens, but I'm just a bit worried about crossing the ball in because he's not been good. That's better. Denzel Dumfries off the post. Letaro Martinez. Oh, my God. How can we not? We just can't find the back of the net. It's just not our luck, is it? We've just got zero luck. This is potentially going to be a win for Sasulo, where they've just held on and, and done the right thing on the break. Well, you know, it's a bad day when we're going to be screaming and shouting and celebrating a draw. Dumfries goes through. Oh, he's saved again. Who is in the net for them? Who is in the net? We should have saw, We should have bought him. We shouldn't have bought Onana. We should have signed him. Dumfries there trying to get it across. To Edin Dzeko, and I, I just don't know. I don't know how we score. Well, they've managed to break free a little bit here, Sasulo. Dumfries, Nick. Oh, my God. Dumfries should have scored at one end, and he doesn't. And we're going to lose 2-0 two -nil, two -nil to Sasulo. Well, they're missing strikers. It doesn't seem to be having an effect. We lose 2-0. The boys should be embarrassed. How did we not score in that game? This is the greatest goalkeeper in the game. He's got a 10. He's got a 10 for a reason. Because he stopped absolutely everything today. Well, what a horrendous start to this season with Inter Milan and to the series. We're losing the Super Coppa and we're currently 13th in the league after losing 2-0 to Juve and 2-0 to Sassuolo. Milan sit top of the league. We're going to have to turn that around in the next episode. I'm pretty happy with the signings we've made and I'm pretty positive we will turn it around. We just couldn't score a goal and when you can't score a goal the momentum's gonna go all in favor of the opposition defensively though that was a little bit worrying as well we need to try and fix the defense i don't know what the issue is because this is one of the better defenses i've had on fifa 22 but that's gonna be it for the first episode of this inter milan series i hope you enjoyed it i can't believe we had an episode with two defeats and no goals scored i didn't get to celebrate at all but hopefully in the next one, we will. We'll be kicking it off against Real Madrid. Again, this is going to go 
uh, much faster pace than the Salford City series, but it should be a fun journey while we're doing it.